Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm revisiting one of my favourite ever demos, this beautiful ethereal sunset gate scene. It's painted using just three colours from my homemade paints, but you can use any brand if you want to try painting something similar. I used cobalt blue, raw sienna and alizarin scarlet lake. OK, let's get on with the demo. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a lovely sort of spring, early evening sunset scene. It's inspired by this photograph from Pixabay. I'll leave the reference um, in the description below. Um, and I'm transporting the gates and the gatepost um, onto my watercolour paper and adding extra walls and trees and things like that and using my, my artistic license. I'm using just three colours today, so a very limited palette of Cobalt Blue, Alizarin Scarlet Lake and Raw Sienna. These are my own handmade paints, but use any similar colours that you have. My paper is Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet. It's taped to my board as usual. Um, and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, which really helps with gravity. Um, the paint flows within the areas where it's painted and um, colour mixes on the page and diffuses. And it's really lovely. I'm using my large size 22 squirrel mop here just to wet the paper all over. And I'm going to start off with a very soft, misty background using... Um, Alizarin Scarlet Lake and Cobalt Blue. I'm just dropping it in across the sky area and a little bit across the pavement. Looking for soft diffusions. I've used plenty of water here, so although it looks quite pale at the moment, hopefully it should dry even paler. I'm just going to make a few adjustments, adding a little bit more blue. trying to leave a few sort of white unpainted areas, particularly where my gate posts are. I'm not looking for anything in particular, just a kind of really soft, misty sort of um, sky backdrop. So that's all I'm doing at the moment is, is painting the backdrop wet in wet now. And um, as soon as I get it where I like it, I shall leave it to dry completely. This is um, a clean, damp um, size 6 squirrel mop and I'm using it to lift out a little bit more of the paint in those areas of the pillars. Uh, those areas should still soften as the paper is still wet, uh, but that gives me a little bit more light um, on those gate posts. And I'm quite happy with that background wash. I shall now leave it to dry completely. It's nice and dry now. It's dried a little bit lighter and I like the soft transitions and the soft diffusions. I think it will make an interesting base for my, for my painting. So I've mixed up a very watery mixture of the same colours, cobalt blue and alizarin scarlet lake and a bit of raw sienna. So those are the three cut, the only three colours I'm using for the whole painting. Um, this is, as I say, quite a watery mixture, and I'm using the squirrel mop to roughly paint in um, trees behind the wall with overhanging branches, ivy, all sorts of climbing plants and things like that um, across the wall. Um, as I work across this large area, I'm keeping it, it's all staying nice and wet so that I can then use a small calligraphy brush to add in different amounts of those three colours here and there um, to change it up a bit and to vary the shades of greens 
and ochres um, within that mass of loose foliage. I'm not looking to paint detail at the moment except maybe some of the edges where I'm going to just dot and dash and sort of imply the ivy sort of growing down across the wall, that sort of thing. It's more important for me at the moment at this stage to build up and colour mix on the page in a very soft way. These three colours do mix really nicely together and it's amazing the variety of colours that you can get. Although I suppose it's not that amazing because um, all colours come from the primary colours. So I suppose it's just a matter of um, you know um, seeing what kind of mixes you can make with different proportions of the paints. That's um, the raw sienna going in. This raw sienna that I've made from the Sennelier pigments is a lot darker than my Cotman raw sienna, but it's a beautiful colour and it creates these lovely greens. Um, the cobalt blue as well with it is really nice. I get lots of granulation from these paints, which gives an extra dimension to the effects. I think with granulation you either like it or you hate it and I really like it. As I get to the outside edges of this large shape I'm trying to break up the edges here and there, um, some soft and some hard, some dots and dashes and sort of broken lines, um, softening back in places adding a bit more of the darker paint, the darker colours in other areas, trying to build up some sort of illusion of form and shape. This is mostly mid-tones on top of the light of the sky, so I'm not looking for any darks at the moment in particular. I mean, I might put some in, but the most important thing at the moment for me now is to try and get all my mid-tones across the painting. My focal point is going to be somewhere around about here and the gate, I think. So I'm using slightly stronger paint and slightly more detail, a bit more red to draw the eye in that mix there as I have this climbing plant and ivy that's tumbling down over this gatepost. I'm being careful to preserve the white of the pillar behind the ivy because that will help draw the eye to my focal point as well, as well as differentiating between the foliage, the ivy and the gateposts. adding more raw sienna in places, more cobalt blue in others, a little bit of the alizarin scarlet lake as well. And adding water here and there as well to dilute the paint, thin it out so I get paler marks in some places and dark shadow. As it is, um, I want my shadows towards the bottom of each of these masses of flowers um, or leaves and foliage and because my board's at an angle the paint is running down towards the bottom of the areas that it's painted anyway so that's already giving me um, a little bit of shadow around the base um, of my foliage. Because I wet my paper so thoroughly, and it's quality paper, it's Saunders Waterford cotton paper, it stays wet for a very long time. And I am using very watery paint, and although it is well pigmented. So the areas that I'm painting um, are staying wet um, and moist so that I can 
drop paint in still without any problems of making any strange marks or of having too hard a line. I think most of this painting is going to be done with the calligraphy brushes building up this sort of um, scribbled detail um, that isn't really detail. These calligraphy brushes are lovely. They are very cheap, easily available online from most retailers. Um, they're unbranded. They're just the small size calligraphy brushes, I think with sort of bamboo handles. And they're absolutely beautiful to use for foliage and things like this. They hold a lot of paint for their size and they've got a really good point. But if you don't have one of those brushes, you could do this with a good round brush as long as it has a nice point to it so that you can change and use the flat of the brush and the point of the brush for different um, size and shapes of mark, mark making. I've mixed up a darker mixture of my three primary colours and I'm pulling it through here and there for some um, twigs, branches, stems, that sort of thing. Just adding in a little bit more dark while, while the paint's wet. As I say, I want this area to be a focal point, so I'm paying a bit more attention to it. So I'm adding slightly darker paint across the base of the wall and um, softening back in places so that I don't just get a, a hard regular line. Um, I, I want it to look very sort of natural and loose. I'm following my pencil lines from the initial sketch and putting in a few branches of trees coming up from, from this clump of foliage and from behind the walls and the gates. I'm going to keep these quite stylized and just pull off a few branches. Again, I'm using my calligraphy brush flicking the brush off towards the end of the branches so that they become finer. So this mixture is alizarin, scarlet lake, cobalt blue and raw sienna, but a very rich mixture and I've just kept adding different amounts of the colours until it, it becomes like this really dark, um, sort of purplish, sort of mulberry brown. I think that will do for now for the branches. I don't want too many of them. So now I'm going to go and start painting some foliage, branches, flowers, weeds and shrubs over on the left side around the left gatepost, but making sure that it's not symmetrical. I don't want to paint exactly the same on this side as I've got on the around the other gatepost. 
So straight away I'm, I'm pulling up a small sort of bush and then some tree branches diagonally across the tape from, from the left and a little bit of foliage. So straight away it looks quite different or I'm hoping that it'll look different from the other side. Sometimes it's nice to have a symmetrical painting, it can work really well, but I don't want that here. I've got the symmetry with the two gate posts and the gate. Um, the foliage, trees and plants, I'd like them to be quite different on each side. This is my size 6 squirrel mop again, and I've mixed up a watery mixture of raw sienna and cobalt blue to make quite a sort of darkish green, a bluish green, but it is quite watery and wet because I want to keep these areas very wet while I build up more colours inside them. I don't want so much detail in my foliage across the top of the painting, so I'm just roughing it in with the squirrel mop first um, and then quickly before it all dries, I'm taking the calligraphy brush to drop in different amounts again of the three colours that I'm using, raw sienna, cobalt blue and alizarin um, scarlet lake. And I'm just going to dot that in and just build up a better shape to the foliage while still keeping it nice and loose. And you can see where the foliage is still wet so that as I drop in the colours, it, they all diffuse into those washes and um, soften out. And because I'm only using the same colours all the time, um, I'm hopefully keeping a really nice colour harmony across the painting. Now I'm quickly working into the paint on this side before it dries so that I can get those same sort of soft passages of paint just dotting around the edges just to break them up a little bit. And I think I need a bit more over here so I'm going to block in that corner and a few other places with the squirrel mop and that very wet watery wash and then I'll go back in exactly the same way and add different colours and tones to those areas to add interest but I'm not going to add as much detail around the top as I have um, around the, the gate post on the right. This is a longer painting than the sort of thing that I usually do, but I'm really enjoying this. I think as an experiment, I think it's working really well and teaching me a lot about um, colour mixing on the page, um, colour mixing from just a limited palette and um, trying to keep something looking loose, but with enough detail um, to be interesting if that makes sense. I think that's nearly there. Just want to kind of break up that edge a little bit more with some um, 
like dot, dots of leaves and softened back with, with bits of water. I think you could do a scene like this uh, with quite a variety of colours. Um, you could use any colours that you that you really like, but it's good to keep your colours fairly limited and then it's much easier to keep um, colour harmony across the painting. For example, if you use the same blue to mix your greens that you use in the sky, then you will have that, that harmonious look. But sometimes if you use different green, uh, different blues to make your greens, it can sometimes look a little bit wrong. It can look as if there's too much going on. I'm trying to keep a fairly dark area along the base of the wall and the pillars and underneath where the gate is going to go, um, but without it being like, like fixed lines. So again, I'm breaking those lines up by leaving gaps or softening edges or maybe smudging an edge down or putting in a few blobs and dots and things. There's no exact science to this. It's just a matter of... Um, experimenting and um, just carefully putting in marks as and where you think they should go. Just put a bit of shadow under there because the, I'm putting the gate in um, shortly. So just establish a little bit of smudgy shadow there first. Just wash a bit of sort of pale paint over the pavement area to try and begin to start that off a bit. It's all dried off now, so the next thing is I'm going to carefully emphasize the gate posts by doing a, adding a bit of detail, the shadows under the, um, the shaping across the top. Again, using the small calligraphy brush. Just really dotting a bit of paint here and there and dragging a bit more down, trying to keep this quite geometric so it contrasts against the unruly shapes of the foliage. A three quarter inch flat brush is very useful for this and I'm just going to use it now to sketch out with dark paint where the gate post will go. So I'm going to use the same technique to rough in over my pencil marks um, the main framework of the gate using this very rich colour, which is sort of quite an aubergine colour made from cobalt blue, alizarin, scarlet lake and raw sienna mixed together to get this really nice dark colour. Um, it might be a bit dark in places, so I'll smudge it back with a tissue. Just using the tips of the 
the flat brush for this. I find it easier to get straightish lines. I'm not worried about them being perfect. It's a loose painting, so if the lines look perfect, it wouldn't look right within the context of the rest of the painting. And this will all get sort of smudged and painted over as well, and blurred out and softened in places. But it's that basic structure that I'm just mapping out first, following my pencil lines. And then dabbing out with a tissue where it's a bit too dark, and that just takes off some of the paint and, and lightens some of my marks. In the photograph, there's some really fancy details in this gate. It's very pretty. It's what drew my eye to it, that and all the ivy. So I'm just going to sort of put a little bit of that detail very roughly and very loosely at the top. I'm trying not to be too detailed with the gate and also to add some variety of colour in the markings that I make. So I'm I'm moving between different different pans of, of or mixtures of the of the um the paint, the three colours. Just going to drag down across across there. Could either be railings or it could be a wooden gate. I'm not really sure. I just want it to be effective. As I say, I've, I've, I'm, I've, I was inspired by the photograph, but I'm not being pedantic about it. The painting now has definitely taken on a, a life of its own, and I'm working within the context of the painting just to do the details that I think it needs. Just a bit more of this sort of fancy ironwork across the top of the gate. I think it's a fine line between between being decorative and being a bit too fussy and too detailed so I'm going to try and keep this to a minimum. I think that will do, I think that, that gives it just enough sort of a man-made structure to um, to work well as a focal point as well. Making sure I get some darks in as well. But I don't want it uniformly dark. I think I just want a bit of pink reflected in that gate post there from the sky. Just a few touches here and there, nothing too much, just, just to help to blend it in um, with the background. few more plants growing up the wall. Again, they're leading into the same, you know, pointing towards the gate and that helps to emphasise it as a focal point. One of the last jobs that I need to do is to put in some darks. So as this area is my focal point, I'm going to concentrate on getting really nice dark detail. I'm doing the same sort of um, brushwork as I did before with my small calligraphy brush, but I'm keeping it a bit more single toned um, or single hued as well. It's this aubergine colour, sometimes slightly bluer, sometimes slightly redder, but it's giving me a really nice dark contrast behind the gate post and I'll use that same mixture across the painting 
to bring out the darks and hopefully bring the painting together. Just dots and dashes again, um, softening here and um, nice little hard edges there. Going to extend this um, dark across the painting if I can, um, but not everywhere. Um, I want to keep the freshness and the lightness and, <clears throat> excuse me, the looseness of it. So I'm trying to pick my dark accents carefully. So with that in mind, I'm not going to paint over all of my tree branches, just the main ones, just to pull out the a darker, stronger tone, more shadowed branches here and there. The goal is, as I said, to try and link the whole painting together with the darks, but without them overwhelming um, the paler and softer passages of paint. With my fine calligraphy brush, I'm putting in now a few lines following perspective to create a very loose approximation or suggestion of pavement in front of these gates. I could put lots of dark shadow across the foreground, but I don't want to. I want to keep this simple. I want it to be all about the foliage, really. That's, that's what I think. The foliage and the light. At this stage of the painting, as I often say, it's a matter of looking at the painting, sort of stepping back and thinking about where it needs to be balanced, either with tone or with, um, with different shapes or a few details, or maybe losing a few details. But at this stage, I think it's usually tone. And here, um, darkening up those branches on the left is again linking across the shadows under the gate posts and across the gate. Um, and then just need to intensify the, the climbing plant and ivy over the pillar, I think in places, just to pull out the shadows here and there. It's nearly finished. Um, I just want to darken up the wall. So, but very slightly, I don't want to be too heavy handed. So I'm pulling across some of that aubergine color in a sort of dry brush across that wall. And then a few, a few strokes of paint, um, nothing much, but just to take down that white paper a little bit more. So the eye is less drawn to that area. And just extend that darker line across the base of the wall of little plants and weeds and things. And I'm going to do a similar thing across the other side this time. Just fill that in with, with pale aubergine paint. Um, being careful to run down the side of my pillar. 
and that brings that forward as uh, brings that you know the light on the pillar shows more against the slight slightly darker shadow next to it Just a few more finishing touches to the pillars. I've added some darks here and there. Increasing the dark tones um, along the bottom of that edge there. And I think I'm just beginning to look for things to do now. And so I think that's an indication that the painting's just about finished. So I'm going to remove the tape and see how it looks. With its nice white border, it seems to bring the painting together. So back to the present moment and I'll take over the narration quickly just to sum up at the end. And even though this was painted a few years ago, it's still one of my favourite demos. I really enjoyed using this limited palette, not colours that I would use together necessarily. The Elizarin Scarlet Lake is an old colour that I haven't used for a long time, but I think I might have to revisit it. And I really enjoyed painting using this calligraphic style brushwork, which I think is very effective for this kind of scene. So I think I'll be revisiting this style again soon at some point. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it helpful and that maybe it will inspire you to pick out three of your favourite colours or even three unusual colours and see how they work together for a scene similar to this. And also, please let me know if you like this longer style video as most of our videos these days are fairly short and if you like the longer ones I'm more than happy to put some of them together for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps with our reach. And of course special thanks to all our patrons over on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.